So now um, we've seen two things. So first we've seen that unemployment always exists. There is always a stock of unemployed workers. Um, and we've also seen that unemployment varies over time. Uh, and of course, employment, which is the uh, other side of the, of the coin, is going to vary uh, over time as well. And we've seen that this seems to be very related to what happens to vacancies. We've seen that unemployment and vacancies are tightly uh, related to the baby chair. Now, if you remember the diagram from earlier in the lecture, we have this big stock of, of people, so people who are in the labor force, people who are employed, people who are unemployed. But if we want to understand how these stocks move, we have to understand the flows going in and out of these different stocks. You know, if you want to understand why a lake changes uh, volume, you need to understand how many springs and rivers are fueling into the lake to bring extra water, and you have to understand where the water is leaking out of the lake as well. Right? So if you want to understand how a, a stock is changing, you need to understand how the flows in and out of that stock uh, are moving over time. So that's the last piece uh, of information that I want to review uh, in this lecture. So we want to understand how quickly people enter and leave the stock of unemployment uh, to try to figure out why you know, that stock is the way it is. So first, thing that's very important to look at, of course, is the rate at which people leave the pool of unemployment. So this is what we call the job finding rate. So we're going to focus on people who are unemployed. So these are people with a job who are looking for a job. And we're going to look at how quickly they are able to find a job. This is called the job finding rate. And here I'm showing you the job finding rate. Uh, that's for the US. Oops, sorry. So this is um, for the US. It's constructed um, pretty easily using data that are made available by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. So you can see it starts in the 50s and it goes uh, to roughly 2015. So this is telling you the speed at which uh, people are able to find, uh, to find jobs. So it's a model job finding rate and it's monthly, so it's per month, right? So if you have a job finding rate of one, it means that on average people find one job a month, okay? Um, so here what do we see? Um, so first we can uh, look at uh, the average. And if you look at the average, you'll see that it's roughly uh, 0.5. That's uh, roughly your average monthly job finding rate in the US. Okay, so it means that people on average they find half a job a month. So what does that mean? Well, if you invert that, you can it tells you that the average duration that people stay unemployed is going to be uh, your average duration is just going to be. 1 over 0 0.5, so 1 over the average job finding rate, and that's going to be 2 months. So this is telling you that on average, people stay about 2 months uh, in unemployment in the US when they are looking for a job. Okay, that's an important thing, uh, that's an important thing to know. In bad times, uh, what can you see? So you can see that systematically in bad times, like here, 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 you can see systematically anytime we have this recession, you remember the recession are represented by the gray areas. Anytime you have a recession, you see that the job finding rate falls. So this is telling us every time we have a recession, it's much harder to find a job. And then in terms of average duration, if your job finding rate is lower, it means your average duration that you're going to stay on is much longer. Uh, so here, say if we take the great recession that we have here, the average job finding rate was um, maybe around 0 0.2 in the Great Recession. And so what does that tell us in terms of average duration? It means that the average duration that people stayed unemployed during the Great Recession is 1 over 0 0.2, and that's 5 months. So much longer time unemployed than in normal times when you had something like uh, about two months average uh, average duration. So that's specifically for the Great Recession. 
Okay? And um, conversely, what we see is that in good times, people find jobs much more quickly. So you can see here, for instance, this is a peak of the dot-com bubble. People were finding jobs very quickly. You can see here, in the late 60s, you know, job finding rate close to one. So it means that people stay unemployed only about one month. You can see here. So systematically, what we see here is that in good times, people find jobs quickly. In bad times, people take a long time to find jobs. So this is telling us that in bad times, people are not able to leave the pool of unemployed. And of course, if you have people who come in and nobody who leaves, your pool of unemployed is going to become larger and larger. In good times, people leave the pool of unemployed very quickly. So it means that, of course, your pool is going to, uh, to shrink and you'll have less unemployment. So it turns out the job finding rate is really a key determinant of uh, what happens to, the, uh, to the, the, the size of the pool of unemployed uh, worker. Something that's also interesting is that um, you can see this job finding rate is you know, almost always um, below one. So it means that it always takes quite a bit of time when you're unemployed to find a job. And this, this fact, the fact that the job finding rate if you want F, we'll call it F very often, is less than some infinite number. Well, here we can see it's always kind of less than, uh, than something like one. This fact is going to explain why we do have unemployment in the first place. So imagine if you were in a world in which when you're unemployed, when you become unemployed, you can immediately find a new job then you wouldn't have any unemployment because people would lose their job and immediately find a new one. The fact that this job finding rate is finite, quite finite, it's always um, below one, explains why we always have some unemployment. So it's going to be a key thing that we want to explain. Why is it that in the first place it takes time for people to find jobs? So think about other things that are um, traded. So think, for instance, about um, stocks. Right? When people sell stocks, when people buy stocks, if these are stocks that are say, traded on the New York exchange or something like this, you sell your stock, it's sold immediately. When you want to buy a stock, you find a stock immediately. Right? So some goods are traded at a very, very high speed. There is never any stocks lying around that are unemployed, at least for you know, normal type of stocks. Um, but for, for, for labor, for jobs, it's not at all the same. You can see here that when people lose their job and they are willing to start a new one, it takes them two months on average to find a new one. So there is something special about labor that, um, that makes that job finding rate uh, so low and that will explain why we have unemployment. And so what is that special thing? Well, it's very easy, right? When you employ somebody, everybody is different. All workers are different, they have different experience, they have different skills, um, all jobs are different. They require different experience, they require different skills. And so of course, trying to match a worker with a job is going to be, uh, it's going to be a complicated affair. Um, you will find, you need to find the person that's right for, if you're firm, the person that's right for the job, the person that fits well in the organization, the person that has the right um, you know, qualifications, the so right amount of experience. And so these things just take time. So firms are going to interview many workers, are going to have to look at a lot of CVs uh, to try to find the right person. And so this whole process of matching the right worker with the right firm, it explains why people you know, are, you know, don't trade like, like stocks, why you don't you know, immediately hire people and why people who have lost their jobs don't immediately find a job. So the fact that you know a, a, a working a worker firm relationship, a working relationship is something that requires a very good match, uh, a very good fit, explains why uh, it's going to take so long for people to find jobs. That's going to be really at the center also of our model of the labor market.